Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Vallabh Chawla and today we will be doing a case on a missed mesial canal which is an endodontic assessment case. So as you can see it in the scan, this is the mesial root of 1-6, the distal root of 1-6 and the palatal root of 1-6, mesiobuccal, distobuccal and the palatal root. Okay, so as you can see in this scan, we'll just hide these lines. You can just check out. There is no evidence of MB2 canal, but the single MB canal which is seen, it seems to be unfilled. So you can see this small faint radio lucent line passing by. That's the mesiobuccal root canal, which is unfilled. Similarly, you'll see a distobuccal canal over here. This is a distobuccal canal and we'll arrange the tooth along the long axis of the tooth we'll arrange the lines along the long axis of the tooth so now we'll hide these lines you can see this is the distobuccal canal which is kind of underfill or short of apex okay and there's pedial widening noted this is the distobuccal canal and this is short of apex okay so 1.5 mm short of apex as you can see it in coronal and sagittal section as well and coming to the palatal canal this is the palatal canal okay so we we'll arrange the line according to the long axis of the tooth you can see the palatal root canal okay this is the palatal root canal again palatal root canal is underfill you can make out in this sagittal as well as the coronal cross section arrange along the long axis of the tooth you can see loss of uh, lamina dura or the boundaries of the pedial space that appears to be uh, widened and lost as well so can make it uh, very well appreciated in the sagittal cross section axial cross section is not very much helpful it is helpful and usually in locating the mb2 cases and this is the distobuccal canal you can make out the distobuccal root canal and the mesiobuccal root canal so mesiobuccal root canal you can just see uh, the severity of the abscess so the abscess of the mesiobuccal root is spreading towards the distobuccal root okay now just make sure this is the distal uh, this is the periapical pathosis and this is the maxillary sinus so we, uh, this is the pneumatization of the maxillary sinus or the increase in the sinus mucosal lining thickening and this is the periapical pathosis of the mesiobuccal root canal so one should not get confused between the pathosis which is abnormal and pneumatization or sinus mucosal lining okay so the, uh, there should not be any confusion between the radio densities of the two entities uh, similarly you can study the cross sections in this thing this is uh, in the coronal as well as sagittal cross sections this is the coronal uh, cross sections and this is the sagittal cmpr so you can see the axial or the occlusal views in this so you can make out the missed canals in this basically helpful to study the mb2 evidence mb2 is less likely to be present in this case okay so we'll just see the amount of pathosis you can also see furcation involvement as noted so we'll just mark the furcation area as well okay so the final diagnosis of this case to the doctor is that uh, the missed canal which is there that needs to be filled okay so that is the missed mb uh, mb1 canal okay whether to extract the tooth or to save the tooth is a de uh, decision of the clinician based on the severity of the furcation involvement the tooth mobility as well okay so you can see it in the three 3d volume rendering also you can see the amount of pathosis which is there on the mesiobuccal root there is no pathosis in the distobuccal root except for mild pdl widening and palatal root also not very well appreciated there is a lot of disturbances caused due to the metallic restorations present so which is one of the drawback of cbct as you can see it okay so patient was basically referred mainly for the endodontic assessment of 1-6 tooth of concern hence this is the diagnosis mm -hmm.